Hello, kindergarten scientists. Miss Hutchinson here in my backyard again to continue our learning about plants. Now, last time we had a video lesson, we were looking at just the basics of plants. We looked around in my garden, maybe in your garden, and took some observations, things we noticed about plants. Do you remember what we talked about? We noticed that plants are green, that they grow in soil, sometimes directly in the ground, sometimes in a pot, and that they have different parts. Do you remember those different parts? We talked about four. So we're gonna quickly review those parts and then we're gonna dive in and... I found another weed in my garden. So we're gonna use this weed to help us remember the parts we talked about. Down here at the very bottom was a part that we had talked about. Do you remember what that part's called down here at the bottom? Roots, good job. And then here in the middle, this long part. Do you remember what that part was called? The stem, great job. Then we have all of these green parts that are hanging off. Do you remember what those parts are called? Those are the leaves, excellent. And then the very last part is all the way up here at the tippy top. Do you remember what that part up here at the top is called? That's our flower. Great. Now we're gonna look at what each part of the plant does. Let's start down at the bottom, the roots. Where are the roots usually when you look at a plant? Can you see them? You can't really. Why is that? Where are the roots located? That's right, they're actually underground because what they need to do all happens underground. Roots keep the plant in the ground, even in heavy winds, and absorb water and nutrients from deep underground in the soil. As we move up our plants, we climb up the stem. What do you notice about the stem? That's different than the roots. The roots are underground. Is the stem underground? No, you guys know that it's not underground. What else do you notice about it? Great, it's long, it stands up tall. Well, let's see, that makes it really, really good at what it needs to do. The stem helps the plant stand tall and allows water to travel from the roots up to the leaves and the flower, and food to travel from the leaves to the roots and the flower as well. Hanging off of our stem are our leaves. Now you can see that they're green, one of our first observations about plants, but what else do you notice about these leaves specifically? They're hanging off the stem, that's excellent. What about their size? They're kind of big, right? And pretty flat. Well, that makes them the perfect shape to help them do exactly what they need to do. The leaf takes in sunlight so the plant can turn it into food through photosynthesis. Big, wide leaves means absorbing more sunlight and the plant can make more food. That leaves just our last part. All the way at the top is the flower. What do you notice about our flower up here? It's a different color. This one's yellow. It's very pretty. It's also kind of wide and open. That's great observation, scientists. Let's take a look at why this shape and this structure is perfect for what it does. The flower attracts bees for pollination and makes fruits and seeds that turn into baby plants. The bright colors and the big shape means more bees can land there. All of the plant parts work together to help the plant survive. The roots keep it in place, the stem helps it stand tall, the leaf makes the food, and the flower attracts pollinators. Great job, scientists. Now that we know what each part of the plant does, we have one last thing to talk about, and that's what is it that plants need in order to survive? Every plant, no matter what kind of plant it is, needs two things in order to survive. Turn and tell someone what you think those two things are. All right, what did you say? You guys are so smart. The two things all plants need in order to survive are water and sunlight. They need sunlight so that the leaves can do photosynthesis and make food, and they need water for the roots to soak up so they have nutrients. You guys are so smart and every plant needs those two things. Now before we go, I wanted to revisit those beans we planted last time we met. Do you remember that? We planted two cups with black beans and two cups with lima beans. 
Well, they haven't quite sprouted yet, but I wanted to show them to you anyways. Take a look at one of our lima bean cups. Do you notice anything? What do you notice? What can you see? Did you say roots? Great job! Our lima beans have definitely sprouted roots. No leaves yet, but they're getting there. And I want to show you one of our black beans. All right, now tell me what you notice. More roots? I see lots of roots too. Do you see anything else? We have one little sprout. It's starting to come up. It's still kind of in its seed, but hopefully that bean drops off soon and we get a leaf. So our seeds are coming along nicely. Now, once they're a little bit bigger, we're gonna do two experiments. Our black beans are gonna grow in different locations. They're both gonna get water, but one's gonna grow in a dark space and one's gonna grow on a sunny windowsill. Take a moment and predict, what do you think's gonna happen? Do you think the one in the dark place will grow? We'll have to wait and see. Now our lima beans are gonna grow in the same place, but they're gonna get different amounts of water. One of them I'm gonna give a certain amount once a week. The other one I'm not gonna give any more water to, and we'll have to see what happens. What do you think will happen? We'll have to wait and see what happens. Keep those predictions in mind because in our next video, we're gonna review our predictions set up our experiment, and move on to one last topic in the garden. If you have any questions or you want to share your prediction with me, your parents can email me. Until then, stay curious, little scientists.